Hello again. Let's continue our notes with kites, trapezoids, and then how to identify all the quadrilaterals we've talked about so far. So kites, kites, a kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So again, pre-AP, the implied statements will be below um, everything they correspond to. So over at the right, you notice that the two top sides of the kite and the two bottom sides of the kite are congruent to each other respectively. Now there's a few things I want you to notice about what is happening with this kite. So if you take away the vertical diagonal and just look at the horizontal one, it actually cuts the kite into two isosceles triangles. And noticing this is going to help you solve a lot of your problems. Also, if you take away the horizontal diagonal and just look at the vertical one, it cuts the kite into two congruent triangles. And then if we look at the diagonal between the isosceles triangle, we see that it will be bisected because we know that the altitude of an isosceles triangle um, is also the median. All right, so let's look at the properties of a kite. So if a quadril is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles is congruent. So this is the pair of angles between the two non-congruent sides. So it's where the, the two different sized sides connect. And then we have exactly one pair of opposite angles that are bisected. So these are the opposite sides. These are the sides between the two congruent sides. It's the vertex angle of our two isosceles triangles that I talked about previously. And also, the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular to each other. All right, so let's have a try at a problem. So here we have a kite, and we need to find x and y. So first, let's look at x. Well, x is a side length, and I'm not sure how I would solve for it, but then I'm going to remember that we have a right angle right here. So let's think back to last unit and all the right angles. If I have two sides and I'm looking for the third, what am I going to use? Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If I substitute in my variables, 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to x squared. 6 squared plus 8 squared is 36 plus 64, which is 100, so 100 is equal to x squared. If I take the square root of both sides, then I find that x is equal to 10. Now let's have a look at y. We know that um, 76 and 2y plus 36 are opposite angles in our kite, and if we look back just above, we know that those opposite angles are congruent to each other. So we can say that 2y plus 36 is equal to 76. If I subtract 36 from both sides, I find that 2y is equal to 40. I finish out by dividing by 2 so that y is equal to 20. Next, let's look at a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So have you seen below, the, my top and bottom sides are parallel to each other and my left and right sides are not. The two parallel sides are always called the bases and the two non-parallel sides are always called the legs. Now, we have a special type of trapezoid called an isosceles trapezoid, and it has its own special rules. So an isosceles trapezoid has congruent legs. An isosceles trapezoid also has congruent base angles. So that's the two angles next to each of the bases. Those two angles are congruent to each other. And then last, we have congruent diagonals. Again, just like with rectangles, it's awkward to draw in that they're congruent with our little congruency marks, so I'm just going to make them both green. All right, now let's try a trapezoid problem. Find the missing angles. So just first looking at our trapezoid, we see that we have two congruent legs. So that means we have an isosceles trapezoid. So that means we can use the three rules that we just wrote down. So if we're talking about angles, the most important thing to us is going to be that um, the base angles are congruent to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my base angles congruent. And so right away we see the top left angle is 50 is congruent to the top right angle because they are base angles. So I'm going to mark that one to 50. And now I need to try to figure out how to find the bottom two angles. Well, I have to remember that I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So if we look at the area that I've highlighted, it makes a C. 
And we know that C stands for consecutive interior angles. And if we remember back, consecutive interior angles are, are supplementary. So if I just take 180 minus 50, I get 130 degrees. So my bottom left angle is 130 degrees. Since it is a base angle, that also means my bottom right angle is 130 degrees. And so I found all of the missing angles in my trapezoid. Now let's look at the mid-segment of a trapezoid. A mid-segment of a trapezoid connects the two midpoints of its legs. So I've drawn in the green mid-segment. I know it's at the midpoints because each of my legs has two sets of congruency marks, and so you can tell that it's been bisected. And also, the mid-segment is parallel to the bases. So if you want to find the length of the mid-segment, we have a formula. Mid-segment is equal to one-half base one plus base two. It doesn't matter which base is base one or base two, top or bottom. Uh, they just have to be added together. And if you notice, really, you're just taking the average of the bases. So let's give this trapezoid some uh, letters. So this is trapezoid A, B, C, D, and then the green line is E, F. So that makes EF the mid-segment of trapezoid A, B, C, D. So if I wanted to calculate the length of EF, then I know that EF is equal to one-half AB plus DC. Now let's try a mid-segment problem. So find the value of X. We know, looking at this problem, that we have a mid-segment because both of the legs have been bisected. So that means that the line marked as 7 is a mid-segment. So we're going to use our mid-segment formula. Mid-segment equals one-half base one plus base two. So my mid-segment is seven equals one-half. One of my bases is two x and the other base is ten, so that's two x plus ten. Since I have that one-half right there, I'm going to distribute it. So I'll get seven is equal to x plus five. And then I want to get x by itself, so I subtract five from both sides, and I find that x is equal to two. All right, now flip back in your notes to last time. I told you to go ahead and draw, like, or leave some space for the rest of this flow chart because there are three pieces that were missing, and we just learned what those three pieces are, so we need to go ahead and add them in. First, in that middle arrow, we're going to add a kite. As you can see, there's no arrows below the kite because there's nothing that the kite goes into. It doesn't share its properties with anything else. It is its own entity. And then we also have the trapezoid, which was the next thing we learned about. And that, of course, is going to follow down into the isosceles trapezoid, because the isosceles trapezoid has all the properties of the trapezoid, plus a few more. And then your true, false, true going up, false going down still holds for the new section of our flowchart. And last, we're going to fill out this chart together. So pause the video and draw this chart out in your journal. All right, so I have a list of a bunch of properties, and then I have each of the shapes that we have learned about so far. And the way I'm going to look at this is look at the first shape and then work my way to the right across to an end with a trapezoid. So first thing I'm looking at is a parallelogram. Well, what are the properties of a parallelogram? Well, we know both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, and both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, and that the diagonals bisect each other. So I'm going to mark those three things on my chart. And then if you glance up at your flow chart, you see that the rectangle, the rhombus, and the square all come down from the parallelogram. So that means they share all the properties from the parallelogram. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all of those x's all the way across to square. Now let's focus on rectangle. Well, what do we know about rectangles? So we know both pairs of opposite sides are congruent and parallel, and the diagonals bisect each other, because those we already marked from parallelogram. But we also know it has four congruent angles, so I'm going to mark that one down, and that the diagonals are congruent to each other. So that's two more properties for rectangle. Now let's look at rhombus. All right, so we know rhombus has all the same properties of a parallelogram, which we've already marked. But we also know that all four sides are congruent, so that's going to be the first box. And we know that the diagonals are parallel. So I'm going to add those two properties to the rhombus column. 
And then again, referencing our flow chart, we know that rectangle and rhombus both have arrows coming down to square, which means square has all of their properties too. So I can just transfer those x's all onto square. All right, next we have kite. Now let's read over what we have, and we know kite is going to be things that haven't been marked so far. So let's take a look, and we know exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. We just talked about that. And then the other thing we know about kites is that they have perpendicular diagonals. And last up is trapezoid. And if we look over all of the properties, the only one that matches is that it has exactly one pair of opposite sides parallel. All right, so that fills out that entire chart. Level, you are done, so you can close out the video. Pre-AP, you have one more video coming, so make sure you watch that one also. Have a great night.